Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we're doing a what's next on Oshaki Foster, the former WBC super featherweight champion following his controversial decision loss to Robson Concisao as he lost the WBC title by, by a decision. Now before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment or subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So Foster, you know, no doubt in my mind, should have won the fight against Fox, against a Sites out. You know, um, I, I thought he probably won eight to nine rounds. But I will say, and I've been saying, he was not overly dominant in those rounds. And, and the thing was, is it wasn't that I, you know, I definitely felt like he won the rounds. But Konsaisa was coming forward and Foster was only throwing one punch at a time. He was not um, throwing multiple counter shots um, to completely dominate the round. And that's what you got to do these days, you know. People need to understand that this scoring system that they have in boxing is not a very good one. It's on a 10-9 system. So if you lose the round, you're guaranteed nine points and uh, just for getting up off your stool. And it doesn't matter if you get dominated or not unless you get knocked down. So you're only one point uh, worse than your opponent. And, um, you know, is that a fair scoring system? I don't think so. I think that's a bullshit scoring system. If you dominate a round, even if you don't score a knockdown, you should, uh, you know, get a 10-8 round. You, you know, the judges should be able to score those better. You should only get a nine-point round if you really go after it. And, and and try to actually win the round and and do some work, do some good work in that round. But the scoring system is what it is and it doesn't encourage a fighter to fight harder, you know, at all. And, you know, Foster is a victim of the scoring system. Did I think he won the fight? Absolutely, I thought he won. But I can understand how um, some judges didn't give him the fight. When you're only throwing one punch at a time, even if you outland your opponent and you play great defense, it's not just about defense, it's about offense. And it's not just about being good enough on offense. You have to be, you know, both. And that's the day and age we live in. We live in an offensive-minded sports system. It's been like that for a while now. All sports, football, basketball, they even cater more to it in baseball, hockey, all the sports are predicated on more offense and because it's entertaining. So Oshaki Foster, I get what he was going for, but he probably should have been more aggressive and he, he might have won the fight um, if he would have, but he didn't. He lost the fight. It is what it is. So now the big question is, what's next for Oshaki Foster following this controversial loss? We'll run through the top 10 here at 1.30 and see what could be happening. First, we start with number one reigning WBO champion, Emmanuel Navarrete. I don't see this one. I think Navarrete is going to rematch Oscar Valdez next. Um, I think he'll beat Valdez, but if he were to lose, I don't think he would want to match up with Foster, and if he wins, he's probably going to want Concise out or something bigger. So I don't see this one, even though they're both with the same promoters. Uh, then you got a rematch with Robson Concise out for, um, for Foster. Excuse me. I think it's about 50-50 right now that the WBC orders an automatic rematch between the two. I think they could do it. I think um, Top Rank and the WBC are probably talking to each other and would rather have a unification bout between the winner of Navarrete and Valdez against Concisao because that would be a rematch for Concisao either way, whoever wins. I think they'd prefer that over Concisao rematching Foster. Um, but I think they need to see when the fight's gonna take place first and then go from there. So I do think there's a possibility that WBC could order a rematch, but I think at, at the moment they're gonna wait, in my opinion, to see when the Navarrete Valdez uh, WBO title fight happens first. Then you got Oscar Valdez. Valdez is the current WBO interim champion. We're waiting around to see if the fight with Navarrete 
thing is for sure going to happen. The rematch. If it doesn't, Valdez gets upgraded to WBO champion, and then his options are, are open, but I really believe Valdez is going to fight Concisal in a unification bout before a foster bout, even though they're still the same promoter. I think the, the promoter, top rank, would rather make a unification title fight and line Foster up for the winner, maybe by having Foster fight in another eliminator himself. So I don't see Foster and Valdez happening. Then you got IBF champion Anthony Kakachi. Kakachi is tied up. He is defending his title against Josh Warrington in September. And then if he's victorious, he's got a mandatory due against hard-hitting Eduardo Nunez after that. So I don't think that these two guys are in line with each other right here. I'm not seeing it. Then you got WBA champion Lamont Roach Jr. You know, Lamont Roach is willing to fight. Uh, I, I think he's he definitely wants to fight whoever, but I, I don't think he's going to fight Foster if a title's not up for grabs. So I'm going to lean towards the no on this one. I don't see Roach and Foster, especially Roach, I think, has a mandatory due next, and I think that's what he's going to do. Then you got former champion Joe Cordina also coming off of a loss. Cordina, though, is moving up to 135. And they're also, you know, with different promoters here, top rank in the zone. Not maybe the most desirable matchup either. I don't see this one. Then you got hard-hitting Eduardo Nunez. Nunez is lined up for the IBF title. I don't think he takes a step back and fights a, a you know, a guy who can box like Oshaki Foster. So I'm going to say no to that one. Um, then there's uh, actually... Andres Cortez, um, he's undefeated. He's moving up the WBO rankings quite quite quickly, and I think he's going to fight. Um, he's going to get some kind of WBO eliminator. So I think taking a step back and fighting a, a guy like Foster wouldn't make sense for him. Um, then there's uh, the guys that are tied for tenth. You got Hector Luis Garcia, the former champion. He's coming off back-to-back -back losses, but he's also, you know, so it, it would be a fight that I'd be interested in. You have a crossroads fight, but they're with different promoters. Uh, Garcia's with the PBC, Foster's with top rank. I don't see the two sides coming together. Then there's Shavkat Rakamov, who's kind of in the same boat. He's coming off back-to-back -back losses, intriguing crossroads matchup, but Shavkat's with uh, DeZone and Eddie Hearn, while... Um, uh, you know, what's his name? The top ranked Bob Arum and ESPN is Foster. Then you got Mark Maxile. Maxile's trying to move up the ladder. Maybe if Maxile could get a WBC eliminator against Foster, he might go for it, but I'm leaning towards the less likely because it's not the greatest matchup for Maxile. And I don't think the PBC would want to cross the street, even in an eliminator, to fight a guy like Foster when he's got no hardware, especially after the way he fought in his last fight. He's going to try to stand back and box, and it calls for an ugly fight. So I don't think they would go for that. Uh, then you got a couple guys tied at the very back. Edward Vasquez, I think that's a good matchup, but with Vasquez coming off a loss to Cordina last year, um, would he want to get back in there against the guy with Foster style? I'm going to say no. Zelfa Barrett, maybe potentially would want the fight, but again, we're... We have uh, Matram and Eddie Hearn fighting Bob Arum in top rank, and it's not a highly touted matchup, so I don't think this one would happen. Rocky Hernandez in a rematch would be big, and I honestly think that if Foster does not get the the mandatory rematch with Concise out, I absolutely think the WBC could order him as he could be the number one contender. And then they would order him to fight his number two contender, Rocky Hernandez, in a rematch from their fight last year, which was fucking great. It ended great where Foster stopped Hernandez in the 12th round after Rocky was winning the fight and would have got a decision victory if it had made it to the final belt. I think they might order a rematch to determine the number one contender in the WBC heading into next year. So I think there is a chance of Foster and Hernandez again. Then the other, the top five guys out of the top 10, out of the top 12, 13, 14, with how I have it at the mid-year. Odor, uh, uh, 
Edorosian is the WBA's number one contender. I think he's going to get the fight with Lamont Roach for the WBA title next, so I don't see this one. Then you got undefeated Albert Bell. He's the WBO's number one ranked contender. I think he's probably going to get a final eliminator against um, Andres Cortez next to determine the WBO's next mandatory challenger. So I don't think a fight with Foster makes sense for him. Then Joan O'Carroll, veteran. Uh, he's fighting another undefe he's fighting an undefeated fighter in his next bout here in July. And if victorious, he's probably right there at the top of the WBA. So I don't see him fighting Foster. Then you got, uh, then you, I already said Andre Cortez. Then you got Masanori Rikishi. This is a fight that is intriguing right here because I really believe Foster's gonna get re-ranked at one, two, or three. And then I think there's a chance that Rikishi gets a crack at either Rocky Hernandez or Foster if they don't order Foster and Hernandez too. So I do think Masanori Rikishi could be a possibility for Oshaki Foster next. And then finally, there's former champion Lee Wood, uh, former featherweight champion Lee Wood, and I actually got this wrong in the Concise Out video. He's new in the rankings in the, uh, you know, at 130, but he's a DAZN matchroom guy, and they have so many other options to put in his path for DAZN and matchroom that aren't a guy like Foster with his style. So, Oshaki Foster didn't really do himself a, he did himself a disservice fighting the way he did in the last fight. Now, I'm not saying he needs to go for broke because going for broke almost lost him two prior fights against Rocky Hernandez and against, um, what's his name, um, by Abraham Supernova. But he needs to find the middle ground between that defensive, just want to throw one punch at a time boxer and the aggressive fighter that we've seen. And I think the middle ground is the way he fought Ray Vargas. He was aggressive, not overly aggressive in that fight. And he, it was a good mix of boxer puncher style that made him or that gave him his best victory to date over Ray Vargas. So um, that's what he needs to do. But I really think a rematch could be ordered between him and Concise out. If not that, I'm telling you right now, I can see Foster versus, um, I can see Foster versus Rocky Hernandez in a rematch or Foster against Masanori Rikishi next. Um, in, a, in an eliminator. One of those fights in an eliminator or a title. I think the WBC will defend Foster to an extent and make him either the mandatory challenger, the number one contender, um, or they'll give him a title shot. So we'll see what happens. Very interested in seeing it. That's it. That's what I got. That's my what's next on former WBC super featherweight champion at 130 pounds, Oshaki Foster, following his controversial decision loss to Robson Concisao as he lost the WBC Super Featherweight belt. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.